All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Mofa Project. Um, so today I wanted to make sure that I finished this bot up. Uh, it has been a long day though because of uh, well, <laughs> hot weather. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's much better, I believe. So uh, yeah, uh, let's get started on this, shall we? I mean. <sighs> Most of it is actually just, you know, me just figuring out things, but... Uh, bleh. Such a long weekend I had. Whew. But the good news is uh, the, the, the thing has been updated. So, um... The, uh, whole, um, the whole thing right now has been updated, which is nice, you know. It's always nice to have an updated version of the tablet itself. So it should not be that much of a problem anymore. It doesn't mean that the problem is gone, though, but it's supposed to be uh, calmed down for a bit. So if we now go to 3.6, and then we're going to go right over here, it should be there, yes. And 3.6 would be fine. So yeah, it has been a long day. But uh, it is, uh, it's good to have, you know, uh, a good old fashioned three days off and then after that, still a bit tired. Next time I will make sure that I will uh, get some good rest. Um, apparently I did something wrong uh, two, uh, two weeks at, uh, after each other and, um, you know, now I'm feeling, now I'm feeling it right heavily. So what I did was actually I did a babysitting on my nephew, but I was waking up for uh, I was I woke I was still up until four. Not the best advice, trust me, it's the worst. So yeah, um, because of that, you know, I kind of gain a headache because you know my eyes are a little bit exhausted. So technically, I should definitely you know remove my glasses and then you know work on my on the drawing again. With no glasses on, just, you know, to uh, relax my eyes a bit. Therefore, you know, if my eyes are, if my eyes are uh, less uh, agitated, you know, I would have less of a pain in the head. But the good news is, you know, it will, it has already lowered down from big headaches to meh. Well, it's more ad agitated now. It's less painful. More agitation than painful, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, such things can happen. And I thought, like, well, you know, working on a Marvel project will be a good idea to just, you know, finish the day off. Even though it has been a very hectic day. You know, first I had to come from the hotel to my work, and then from the from my work I needed to go to take the uh, train. The main problem with the train right now, with the train right now here is that we, because we had a storm, all the trains were like, oh, we are so sorry, but, uh, yeah, this is not right. This is not uh, available today. So yeah, a lot of it, a lot of the train, uh, a lot of the train uh, trains that I went with were not available. So therefore, you know, my whole I had to reroute it all, and uh, that took me like uh, almost two hours to go back. Really annoying, if you ask me. Really annoying. But uh, no, nonetheless, I'm very happy to be here anyway. It's good to have some, you know, resting here and there. Probably gonna be making this a short one because, well, you know, I'm still a bit too tired. Meh. You know, tomorrow we will get better at it. It's uh, it's just today that I'm literally tired because of all the stuff I had to do. Tomorrow I will be working on my. Uh, on my emotions and then you know on the emotion drawing again so pick up a new one do that one and then uh, once that one is done I will try to do my very best to get to uh, the get to the Malfog again in the, in the night time so uh, yeah I'm gonna be doing that gonna get a good old-fashioned sleep probably around 8 or something like that yeah that's a good one to go for Eight is always a great term. Well, nine is better than eight, but uh, a 
it's better to just uh, make sure that things are working quite well. So yeah. All the work, all the hard work I'm doing right now, you know, all the things I did before. It's very important to keep that in, in line and check. And this is what the main problem with most of the drawing with the uh, bark. Because you have so much empty space right here, um, it can cause a little bit of a do uh, a mul a mul a mul uh, a mul formation. Yeah, I think that's the word, right? It's a little bit uh, too open. Therefore, you know, if I want to draw a line or when I want to draw some additional color in there, it doesn't represent the uh, shading effect that I want while uh, while doing the lines. So if I would have drawn right here and then just you know drew the line. You can see there is some uh, shading effect going on, but if I do it without the uh, without with a very big open space, uh, things look a little bit uh, strange. So if I would do it right here with no lines, you can see that I need to make small changes. But if I have like a big one right here like this, the whole effect goes away, which is the main problem. We don't want to lose this effect. Therefore, you know, we need to change it up a bit. But, uh, yeah. It has been a long day. Honestly. Lots of work. Lots of doing things. I finally figured out how to do a bloody damn circling pattern. Ugh. That was a pain in the ass to do because of how the program works. Apparently, I cannot do it on a sketch. So, I cannot sketch it and then, you know, repeat the whole damn whole damn circle pattern. So, I cannot draw these circles. I need to first extrude it, so it will be already, you know, big upwards. And then I can make the circle pattern, which is a bit of a hassle. Not the problem I was looking for, but uh, yeah, it is still a problem nonetheless. So, um, yeah. Ugh. Hopefully, you know, once uh, once my rest is done tonight, I uh, might need to even make an appointment again. Uh, that might be a big problem. But yeah, I need to wait this out for one week, and then if if the problem is not solved, then I need to uh, visit an eye, an eye doctor, an optogen, because of uh, I don't want to lose eyesight. That's a bad idea. Yeah, that means that I did something wrong when doing it, but I think it is just a lazy eye. So it's like a lazy eye because it doesn't able to focus because it's too tired. Which is the main problem. So by, you know, resting, it will generally fix itself up. So just, you know, resting it up, making sure that everything works well. And then, you know, everything will work fine. So technically what I should do is, you know, do this one. This eye right here. And then make sure that the eye is trying to focus. So making sure that the eye, because it is lazy, or at least, you know, f not fixable, force it to focus. Which is a good idea. It just means that, you know, I should definitely do this with the other hand. Or at least, you know, keep the eye closed. So, yeah. Eventually, you know, the eye will return back to normal. And then, you know, once that is done, we can then, you know, continue with our just doing whatever we wanted to do in the first place. Which is most likely just, you know, drawing. So, yeah. How much time did I actually do this in? I probably did it in 10 minutes, right? Yeah, probably. So I should definitely do some more on it. Which, uh, you know, is a thing. It's a thing that, you know, is supposed to be done anyway. So we will do it. There we go.
All right. Now we have done this whole damn shenanigans right here. That is good. And now you can see how far we are. So we're almost at the part where we can say like, ah, well, congratulations, we can leave this tree behind. So that's a good part. Um, most of the uh, tree right here is a bit of a hassle to deal with because, you know, this is like a big tree, big chungus boy. So what we're going to do now is going to be looking back to the lines, probably this one, right? Or this one? No. This one? No. 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 Interesting. It's the one be above it then, right? It's this one then, right? Yeah. All right, good. So we got Control C. So because we need to fix this, we are going to go for this one right here. And now we're going to add this part right here back into it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw this line. I'm going to make this tree look big. So that's how we do it. So I'll make this tree look big. That's the idea. So we have this tree. We have this lump of a man right here. We have some lines here and there. We can improve that part right there. And we can say like, yeah, that, that's a good part. And then, you know, go forward with this part right here. And we can add some, you know, oakish flavor right here. And this will, you know, implement our tree part. So this is like the idea that we're going to go for. And now that we have this tree effect that we want, we can now look at like, ah, oh, well, since this is a tree effect, we can see like, ah, oh, well, then there will be grass like right here. And that will be fixing the bits that we are leaving behind. All right, good, good, good. Now we still need to fix this bit right up. So we need here or there. We need some stuff. Yep. All right, cool. So now we have done that. We can now give our lovely thing right here. We can give this thing the the brush that we need, and now we can add this into it. Boom. There we go. Easy as that. No need to uh, overdo the call, of course, but we do need to make sure that everything here is settled. No. Right, add it right here in, add this bit in there, add this bit in there, add this bit in there. There we go. Oh, 
We are gonna make sure that the tripod right here is done in front of it. Therefore, you know, we don't have to deal with this. But we could implement that later. Um, so there you go. All right. Lovely. Oh, hey, Aisha Gaming. What's up? That's what she said. <laughs> nice. But yeah, this is like, ugh, this takes so long to draw. It's such a big boy. Big tree. Big tree. Lots of things that need to be done in here. But yeah, um, I think I'm going to be first doing the uh, coloring and then we're going to do the... And then we're going to continue with the rest of it because uh, we cannot allow this to be, you know, we need to make sure that I can see what the hell I'm drawing in into and that is not going to be happening if I, do it, not, if I don't do this like that. Oh boy, that's not the color that I want. This is the color that I want. Thank you. I always say that when the, when when you know the when the bloody damn thing is like, hey, this is the color you want, right? And then then it goes to the black to the default black that you are using when doing the line one line work on it. But yeah, these trees are big, chunky boys, long woods, everything that always works with it. And I must say though, it's a very nice tree. There's nothing to be wrong with it. It's nothing. There is nothing wrong with this tree. It's just you know, it's a very big tree, and what we're doing right now is just very you know, making sure that everything is a Dutch man, man. Just playing some cross out. Oh, sweet. Cross out is always great. I really like the game. It's a very easy game to go uh, to go into, and uh, a very eh, not addicted. Not that much, but. It does give it does give some good old fashioned feelings when you just blow up some people with bloody damn scrap guns. Lovely. And I do like the style. It's just Mad Max with uh, with guns. And I like it. Mad Max style is always great. Especially in a kind of game where you can create your own damn machine of destruction. All right. Ah, what the? Well, back to uh, doing the basics. All right. Now we can start with our lovely little pick of chunky boys. So, um, Eats is the best clan. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. It's a very fun clan. Nice people, great people to help you with. It's always great to have like people around you that know things about things. My favorite build right now is just, you know, blow them walls with Harpy Cannon. Blow things up. Because, you know, blowing things up is my jam. I like seeing people's parts just flying off here, left and right. Although they can dodge it quite quickly, but eh, you know, if you're stealth, then they cannot see it happening. All right, now we need to figure out like how we're gonna do this. So I want to go for like this kind of appearance, and this kind of fortune to it. This idea here is just, you know, making sure that we have, like, you know, the idea of, you know, a line working towards it, scattering up and gathering up speed and then, you know, eventually going upwards. What I really like about this thing is, like, how big it is. It's, like, a very nice little bit of, you know, machine that we are going to go working with. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yep, I knew it. So I need to rest my eye. Ugh. So, how do we do that? Well, we're just gonna make sure that we're gonna force it to work. Pressing our eyes together while one eye together and just draw with the other eye. Even though this eye is less accurate than the other eye, it does mean that we are having pinpoint advantage right now. Because we're focusing on drawing the lines. It's like, you know, a little bit of practice, you know, you you already know what you need to do in the first place when you're going to an eye. When you are when you were a child and you needed to fix the lazy eye, because otherwise, you know, you're going to have a lazy eye forever. Of course you don't want that. That's a stupid thing you want to have. So, uh, yeah. Just forcing your other eye to watch. It's not a big amount of uh, thing that right now happens, but it's more like, you know, you have this and then you have like a shiny bit around the area. And that means that, you know, it has been bloated up by um, amount of pressure. Which means that the pressure inside of the eye is a bit too much. That means that, you know, what I did, which is like staying up until 4, was a very bad idea. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, 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 I know, right? I know. Every individual would have known already that, you know, staying up way too long, way before your bedtime is a very bad idea. But, yeah, you know, I just wanted to watch it. I just wanted to see... But no, I should not have gone to watch it because, you know, I was already sleepy, so I should definitely just lay down and just go bloom. And then just go down. But I didn't. Uh, luckily for me, you know, I know how to fix it. So, you know, no need to do that. It's just manual fixing. Focusing on the thing that you need to do and then, you know, go forward with it. So, um, how much time did I waste on this? Probably a lot, right? Come on, get it. There you go. Um, what do you think of acro? Of acro, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what I would think of Acro Year. I, I, it sounds fun, you know, acorns everywhere. It's always great. Ah, 23 minutes already in. Sweet. I just needed to put my glasses on because, you know, I cannot see in the screen. I am very terrible at looking far away, so this is why I always like to wear my glasses while gaming because, you know, that's how things work. So, um, I'm going to go over here, fix this part right here. There we go. We're just creating a big old-fashioned loop-de-loop. -loop. And the funny thing is, actually, the more we do this, the more elegant ways of getting from one point to another and just, you know, fixing some bits and there and nooks and crannies, it gives the feeling of a tree, all right? It gives the feeling of a tree. If you don't look at it from a tree perspective, you know, you want to make it like not look like a tree, it, it doesn't work. So by f focusing on getting to the point where we are saying like, hey, this is a tree, you know, then people will be convinced like, yeah, this is a tree. Looks like a tree, it smells like a tree, it feels like a tree. And that's the most important part, because, you know, you are not the one to judge. Most people like to judge. But if people see that it is a tree and your eyes are already like, oh man, this is too basic for a tree, then yeah, it might not work. Unless, you know, you're basicing, unless you create a more basic kind of art style. Right now, we're creating semi-realistic art style with no painting. Which means, uh, normally, you know, people paint trees, they paint a tree like this, they're gonna go for this, and then they're gonna go whoop, 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 and then you have a pine tree in the background. Or you can go for like this, 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 and then, you know, you create a bit of flush, fluff around it, and you create more fluff around it, and then you create more fluff around it, and you create more fluff around it, and then, you know, you fill it up a bit by lighter colors. And then you have like a tree that, you know, is a uh, is a tree that stands in the background as well. Those are two ways to create some trees. Right now, we're creating 
trees with Lineheart, which means that, you know, we need to create bark with it because, you know, trees have bark. If you don't have a dog, then, you know, you probably don't know what bark is, but hey, you know, probably have heard the dog of your neighbor complaining about their food supply, which they didn't have, lost, lost one minute, so, hey, you know, that's a thing that can happen. But yeah, it's it's very important to notice when, you know, certain things like this happen. It's also very hard to notice when it happens, but when it does, you really should come to the realization like, ah, well, this tree needs a bark. Because why not? Because, you know, trees need to be aggressive. They need to fend off cats and all that stuff. That's why they need a bark. Otherwise, they probably will not be able to be protecting themselves against that. It's all that lovely stuff. So, yeah. I still wonder, like, you know, does a tree bark in the woods, you know? That, that's a joke that is terrible, but, uh, you know, you, you get the point. It's important to have bark on, on trees, because it's, like, literally their main feature. It's like, why do they look so woody? Well, it's because of the bark. Otherwise, they would have been so smooth as hell. They would have been just, you know, smooth trees with some nerves on it, but nothing else. The bark gives them features. The bark has also different features, so you have different barks. You have barks with white and brown in it. You have barks that are just brown. You have uh, you have orange bark. It's uh, quite a hefty amount of bark that you can go for. And all of the barks are looking quite, quite cool. You can also have mossy bark, which you can implement on different things. Oh, all right. Uh, well, you know the leader. Um, yeah, he's a chill dude. You know, he always gives helpful advice. Honestly, he gives honest and helpful advice. He tells you when you know certain events are coming around and when you can make money out of things from the market itself. And if you follow that advice a bit, then you know you're gonna make some proper money, which you can then use in or invest in uh, Crossroad itself. So yeah, probably that's uh. That's really helpful, which is true, you know, really helpful to have, uh, you know, somebody who keeps you, in, keeps you in check on, you know, oh, I can make this, or oh, I can do this, or oh, is this event going? Oh, man, that's cool. That event? Nah, man, that's not a real one. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting thing to do, you know, just events that are very nice to go for. Hmm. All right, I should definitely not go for long ones here. I should definitely go for short ones because otherwise we're going to get a little bit of trouble. And by a little bit of trouble, we're going to make sure then we're going to get a lot of issues later on, which we don't want. We want small, inconvenient line strokes that don't add up to each other. Well, they do add up to each other, but they don't form one big line. That is the main idea right here. But because this is a big one, that's the main problem most of the time. So we should definitely add some variety in it. There you go, twist and crawl, and then that would, would be happening. All right. All right.
No, man. There you go. What do you think of? Uh, eh. Just a funny guy, but for the rest, you know, his builds are decent, but he relies too much on his own builds. The main problem with his build is most likely that he is now trying to get the Cyclones back, and he probably already has, but he has made major uh, non-profit out of it. So he probably has lost a lot of coins out of it, because, you know, he bought the Reapers instead of, the cy or instead of keeping the Cyclones, which have been increased in price thanks to uh, certain kind of buffs. And I must say, though, you know, Cyclones are decent. They they are they doing their job, but they they don't stand a chance against certain types of weapons because of how big they are. That's the main problem. They are so easy to point at. But yeah, cyclones. Um, uh, and that is his main build, and he probably won't switch from those builds, or he's probably gonna go for a fire dog. That's all. That's all he has. I believe. But uh, you know. Still a chill dude, don't get me wrong. He's just a little bit too young, but for the rest, eh. Like 14, I believe. <laughs> that explains the name, though. <laughs> nah, that's, a, that's an inside joke. I like it. Alright, 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 alright. So we do have this, we do have that, and then we can go to right over here. There is n there is too much space. We cannot allow this, you know. Not too much. Too much space can create hassle, and we don't want hassle. We don't want that. If we create too much hassle, then you know things go bad. But if we create too little hassle, then you know things go bad either way. So if we now look at this right now, we can see that, you know, we implemented stuff and we can see there are some issues here and there. One of the issues right here is that we don't have so much of a line in there that is like, you know, non-consistent. So we need to keep that up and running. There we go. Right here the same. We have some lines, but we don't have consistency in those lines, so we should definitely do that, like so, connecting those with each other. And then right here, there are some lines that needs to be also there, so we could go for this kind of effect. There you go. Implementing the uh, brush increase. All right. Yes, yes, yes. And he bought, and he needed to beat, and he needed to buy them. So he lost, like, I believe, uh, how much did he lose? Because he bought, he sold the Cyclones for the same price as a Reaper, which means 2.6. So he lost around, around 900 coins to the amount of stuff that he lost to. Which is not too bad, honestly. You know, 900 coins losing, uh, losing in profit is, it's a lot, but it's still recoverable. Don't get me wrong now, but whew, 900 coins, that's a lot of minus profit. You know, I uh, I played for, I played, I played with a Typhoon for like almost uh, two, um, almost, you know, half a year until, you know, the market fee came up. And I must say that that is actually quite fun because of how Typhoons work. They are relics, so therefore, you know, they are big pricey objects to get. I sold my whole inventory. And then, you know, I gambled on making sure that that thing goes in price, which it did. Which, you know, is very nice for me. And then I sold it for 700 coins of profit. That's like a lot of work paid off. Because, you know, that's 700 coins back in the, back in the, back in the thing and then I can make my own build. Right now, um, if I would sell the... Um, if I would sell the, um, how do you say that one? Deconstructors, I believe, I would also make a profit right now. Because of how the new uh, cabin is going to be performing. If the cabin is going to be performing well, then those things will actually be also very well on performing. So yeah, Reapers 
hang they were like two point um, about and second for a low and that yeah <laughs> I don't know man sure thing man for it sure thing I didn't know if you had if you didn't I uh, sure thing man I I didn't know if you made profit out of it or not because you know it, it was very risky of you to buy them at a higher price so glad for you that you uh, fin and that you get it off good But uh, yeah, the uh, deconstructors are now also in price, but I don't know if I'm going to sell them. I'm just going to wait until they go to 3. Point, to uh, 3.0, I believe, and then I will sell them off when the market fee comes off. Then I will make money again, because that's how that works. And then I will also sell the big foods, because the big foods are then also in price, increase properly. So I'm just waiting for the market fee to come around, and then I can make profit. That's how you're supposed to play the market, because you're never supposed to sell stuff. Well, you supposed to sell stuff, but you're not supposed to sell uh, items when the market fee is uh, at uh, z uh, at 10%, because holy shit, that's a lot. But yeah, Crossout is a nice game. Neat game. Good game. Great game, actually. Fun game, good game. Not gonna be playing it much because of how things work right now, but uh, me. I'm too busy playing other games. I'm too busy drawing right now. Which is always great. I mean, if I do things like this, it always is a nice thing to see, you know, things like that. But I'm happy that you uh, I'm happy that you bought those cyclones before they went too pricey. What you could try to do is actually sell them off right now if you bought them for the 2. Uh, 2.7. Wait for the market fee to come around. Then sell them for like, what, 1000 coins profit each? And then you might be able to get a relic out of it, if you play it right. And then you have your first relic, which is great. I would recommend going for Pokemon on the Scorp, but uh, that's just me. Or well, Punisher could also be well done. Punishers are actually quite decent. Even though they are not the best weapons, but they are really good. Typhoon's absolutely useless. Unless you have Ice Cop Box Cabin, which is a very expensive uh, cabin to go for. So, uh, let's see. How much time do I need to do right now? I'm almost at the point where I need to be anyway. Look how much stuff I'm doing. So much tree. So little time. Mm. There we go. So if we zoom out now, that that will work, right? Will that work? Uh. Not really. I need this one to be a little bit more that way. There are some issues right now in that part. I'm still trying to get the other two cyclones. Ah! See, you need to get the two other cyclones. Well, that is a major problem right now because of... I thought that you had all the bo with both, uh, both three cyclones right now for the same price. But because you need to get the three other cyclones, they will probably be in a heavy price, so... You won't be able to sell them off later on if you ever want to do that. Which is the main problem. So I would recommend to craft them. Because if you would play the arena, you could technically get a legendary coupon. Which then reduces the price of the legendary by 300. Therefore, if you would be able to craft it, it would be then far more cheaper. Probably. Unless the equipment that you need for it is too expensive. But... You get the point. So get the legendary coupon out of the arena matches, then those those legendary coupons will then be used to create the legendary you want and you can make more profit out of it. For later on, and then you can buy the cyclone or you can craft the cyclone for profit. And then once the cyclone becomes like, you know, 
the thing that you don't want to use anymore, then, you know, you can still sell it off with profit and therefore, you know, you don't make any decrease in progress, which is the major, major issue most of the time when you play cross out. It's a very grindy game and uh, you don't want to lose prof uh, you don't want to be you don't want to lose progress in that game. I would say not that it is it, it is free to play but it is not f uh, pay to win. You could buy re you could you could buy resources, you could buy stuff to progress faster but doesn't matter because you know you're still stuck at the same uh, you're still stuck uh, stu stuck at the high then at a higher power score which then increases your difficulty. So there is no there is no need to progress. It is just, you know, facing some diff uh, different challenges like scorpions suddenly appearing in your fucking face. Which uh, can hurt, you know. Bloody damn real gun guns that can shoot across map, pinging off your weapons like there is no tomorrow. Or, you know, just a big giant cannon that just can shoot twice and heating up your vehicle and then suddenly you are set on fire. So yeah, there is no, there is no pay to win there. The only part where you should think of pay to win is like, oh no, these models are strong. Yes, they are, but they they are not like you know very dangerous in the uh, lower brackets, or they are just you know new weapons you can buy from the market. You can still buy everything. Every single fucking weapon that is announced in the pack, you can still buy. Every single uh, wheel or how do you say that wheel. Or tracks you can buy on uh, you can buy in the game, which I really like about that game. It's not like in War Thunder where you have like, oh no, I need to face somebody who paid up uh, paid for a vehicle. Yes, the vehicle is in a is in a certain amount of uh, power score. You know the place where everything is placed, like the balancing issue. But the most problem with that those things is like they have like f way too too good of a weapon or way too good of an armor. And you not get, can get around with it. With crossouts, you can just get around with like, oh no, you have a relic. Well, then you're dead anyway because I bu I built this kind of machine. And that's how you most likely get around with it. Like you can build a wedge build if you want to deal with some stupid people, or you can build a boom build. You know, just you know, put some explosive spears on the in in your vehicle and go go fro forward until somebody dies. And it's a uh, it's not my place, though, of course. I really like to just stay in the back and shoot people, but uh, it's still a fun thing to do. You know, just blowing people up from uh, from uh, from afar, seeing their precious OP build, they always say, and, you know, see it all go into flames. You can also build different kind of things, like you can build a laser shotgun that overheats really fast, and then you, when you have enough money, you can just buy the right cabin for it and then you know you see the enemy just melt in two seconds it's so funny and that that's always great and the way you make profit when the way you make money is just you know sell the resources so even though you know people can even though people can buy the the items the coins to get to the resource uh, to get to the weapon it doesn't matter because you know you still be able to do, you still be able to defeat them nonetheless. It's just that you need to be aware of what you're gonna face if you're gonna upgrade your build. That's the main issue. You need to be aware of what you're of what you're facing. And if you're not adapted to it, then I would say that yeah, it is a pay-to-win game because you know you're not adapted to the situation at all. You realize that you're outnumbered. You're like, oh, I got this new cool new looking weapon, new vehicle that I can use, and then immediately getting shrugged because, well, you know, the vehicle was either poorly built or probably poorly pre-built, or the weapons on the vehicle really, really are terrible, or they are not very useful on their own. So you need different weapons to combine. Yeah. I'm still trying to get it to Cyclones. Yeah. Yeah, see? It is indeed, it's indeed, you know, if it would be pay to win, I would, I would have already noticed, but it is, it's not pay to win because I know games that are pay to win. <laughs> they like to play, they play, to, they like, they like, they like to, you know, make you pay for every single, single dime and Crossroad is not one of them. The resources, you can, you can get a legendary weapon in like what, in a month? Easily. And legendary weapons are not relics, of course, but they are very good. And 
it's it's not always you know advisable to say like well um those weapons are very strong yes they are they they meant to be legendary and then suddenly you know you have a build that just can you know poof and your weapons are gone those kind of builds exist like there is a shotgun that is like very good at close combat but it's absolutely horrendous at long at long oh i am using the wrong brush i see Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Very well, I'm using the wrong brush. That is all entirely my fault. I will accept my failure there. Hmm. Alright, let's continue. So, yeah, the amount of... Um, the amount of stuff you can pull off in one month, it's like insane. Also, uh, relics are not that hard to get if you, once you get your sh once you get the stuff rolling. Because if you have like two legendaries, you probably will be able to contest in in clan wars. Therefore, you get uranium. Uranium you can sell, and then once you sell it, you can get yourself a, a, a relic eventually. Because you know you only need like what three uh, six hundred uranium to sell, and then some free money that you had from farming. Oh well. That's not a lot. So within a year you can get your relic, and then within the second and within the second year you have your second relic quicker because of how relics work. They are they are multiplying the they multiply your performance most of the time. But then you are at the end. Then there is nothing to get. So it's either you're gonna get two relics and it's like, wow, is that it? Did I do it? Did I beat this game? Well, you cannot beat the game, but you certainly did make yourself a fortune, you know, playing this game. And uh, yeah, I really like I really like where the game always goes. I really like the art style they pick and how uh, how the new weapons are used. Like, oh, cool! They introduced a new type of porcupine that lays that just lays down spiky blades that can get stuck in your wheels. I really like that kind of idea, you know, being less visible, being more scary, because, you know, you're you're probably going to get stuck on it. And they can hurt, you know, frames really well. So, yeah, it's all it's all about, you know, adapting, seeing what you do. Like I have like three decon I have three deconstructor build, which is like, oh, you have a build. Well, should be a real shame if you're getting heated up and boom, done. So yeah, it's a it's a build where you can just get toast by lasers, very aggressive micro uh, microwaves. <laughs> it's very funny. So um, yeah, I also have just a wasp build with Hoppy Cabin for maximum explosive, and uh, it's fun. It's really fun. It's really working well in raids. It really works well in PvP as well. I even got MVP on those sometimes. Because, you know, nobody expects somebody to use those rocket launchers. And those rocket launchers actually are very deadly. They they strip enemy weapons so quickly. It's hilarious. The only downside of the weapons is that, well, you know, they're hard to aim. They're really hard to aim. They, they, they just go everywhere. So what you want to do is actually go close range, shoot them in the back, and then see them explode. Because, well, you know, everybody plays their explosives in the back. So why not try to, you know abuse that tactic because somebody likes to play place their explosives in the back that means that you know they're vulnerable in the back if somebody plays their explosives on the in the in their frames their frames are exposed therefore if you hit them on the ground with those rockets and you hit them in near the wheels the explosive also will go off and they will fall down grounded i also had that happen once very funny to see an entire build like, oh my god, this build is so tanky, and then, you know, suddenly it has no legs anymore. So you're like, alright, don't mind me just parking there, and then shoot you from a distance. It's very funny. <sighs> yeah, I don't have two-step verification. Ah, I see. There you have your problem. This two-step verification is very important. You need to connect your you need to collect your email address with the Gaijin uh, Gaijin account. Otherwise, you uh, and then you know you have your Steam and your email address combined. Because if you don't do the two uh, two ver 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 verification, there you cannot sell stuff most of the time. You cannot sell the most important stuff that you need to sell. 
which then lead you to some the amount of m money lost. And, uh, you know, it's not a very aggressive uh, verification. It's just, you know, hey, connect your email account to Gaijin, please. Thank you. So that we can send you some free updates. Like, oh my god, Crossout is having a new update. There you go. I never had anything, you know, sent to me most of the time because I just, you know, make sure that I put it into spam because I already have Discord, so therefore I don't need to know where the hell it is. So yeah, try to do, uh, try to get that uh, up and running uh, for it. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna be there for a long time. And sometimes I, I, I believe you can't, but yeah, it's, it's a very annoying thing. I, uh, I immediately did it because I saw how long it's gonna take to get the, uh, like, I want to sell my legendary, and then it says like. No, you cannot do this. You need a two set, a two verification, and it's like, ah, uh, yeah. And then I need to wait either two two months, two weeks to get it sold off, or just or just thirty seconds, thirty minutes. Hmm. I know, I know which one I would take. Which one I would have taken? Definitely. So yeah, it's uh, it's very important to have that very 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 ver verification. Otherwise, things will uh, go a little bit bad. Mm, look at that. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That looks nice. That looks nice. Look at that tree. Look at that big tree. Look at that big, humpy, bumpy tree. I like it. It's not as humpy, bumpy as the other one, but uh, it will be. Once I'm done with it. Once I'm done with the shading and bits and the nut, nuts and crannies, yes, I, it will be. So, uh, yeah, I think I will leave it there. And uh, let's see. 6.0 gigabyte. Ooh, very spooky. <sighs> so, I hope you all have enjoyed for today. And uh, thanks all for watching. And I hope we'll see you all next time. Until then, I want to wish you all a lovely day. And uh, bye!